Hey Bio family, it's Mr. Hajarian about to record lecture number Onse, lecture number 11. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Hanging out here with Mr. Jones sitting somewhere over there. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Have your video lecture notes out. Let's talk about meiosis. Uh, meiosis sounds like mitosis. It's a lot like mitosis, but it also has a lot of differences. Uh, there's a lot of differences between the two. Sometimes it's pronounced meiosis, but I like to pronounce it meiosis. So first things I want to show you is notice what I've drawn these, um, what I'm pointing at with my arrows, with my strange looking arrows. What you're looking at there is a set of chromosomes. So let's look at this one right here. I'm going to draw it on this side. So that right there is actually a chromosome. Okay. Now when this chromosome replicates, it ends up looking like that. So a lot of times when I ask students, you know, show me what a chromosome looks like, they point to this, but then they say that that's not a chromosome and that's false. That is a chromosome, it just hasn't replicated yet. So what we're looking at here is replicated chromosomes. I'm going to come back to this and talk about it just a little more uh, later. But notice how in meiosis there are two phases. So here's meiosis 1, or the first phase, and then meiosis 2, the second phase. The goal of meiosis is at the end to end up with four cells. And we'll talk about what kind of cells those will be. Uh, remember in mitosis at the end we ended up with two cells. Okay, let's do this. What is meiosis? It's a process for creating sperm and egg cells and we call those gametes. So when you hear gametes we're talking about sperm and egg. And it's got two goals. In no specific order, goal one is to uh, make cells at the end with half of the chromosomes. Okay, we call that haploid. And the second goal is to mix up the genes, and we'll get into more detail about what I'm talking about. So first of all, an overview of meiosis. Chromosomes are copied to form sister chromatids before meiosis. So there are two age stages, and here's what I want to draw for you. Again, that chromosome that I drew in the beginning, there it is. Now when it replicates, remember what it looks like? Now it's going to look like that. Okay? The ones that I'm going to color, so this, the red one, these are sister chromatids with the white ones. We call those sister chromatids. So when a chromosome has replicated and it looks like this, we say that each part of it is a sister chromatid. Okay? That term is going to come up a lot. There are two stages. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, uh, these things are called homologous pairs or homologous chromosomes. They're separated. In meiosis 2, sister chromatids are separated. And that's what we're talking about here. We're going to have some visuals in a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean by all of that. The result is that we get four haploid daughter cells. And remember, we talked about haploid briefly. Haploid means half the number of chromosomes. So what is it called when you have the full number of chrom chromosomes? It's called diploid. All right. Let's keep moving. In humans, this means there are 23 chromosomes in each cell. So what are homologous chromosomes? And that's something that can kind of be confusing. So it's a pair of chromosomes that contain the same set of genes. You get one from each parent. They don't necessarily have the same identical information, but they could each have the gene for, let's just make something up, for hair color. So for example, you get a chromosome number four from mom and a chromosome number four from dad, right? So. Let's look at this example here. I know it's kind of behind my head, but there's some homologous chromosomes right there. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, um, maternal is red, paternal is blue. So you get the red one from mom, you get the blue one from dad. And notice how these have both replicated, right? Those are replicated chromosomes. When you have a situation like that, when you have two replicated chromosomes and they're hanging out next to each other and they're both chromosome number four or both chromosome number eight, we say that those are homologous chromosomes. So that's where this word comes from. Homologous meaning same. So what's the difference between homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids? All right, sister chromatids are identical copies of the same chromosome. So I'll draw it for you again. Here I have a chromosome. All right, if this chromosome replicates, 
that's all identical information that just replicated to another sister chromatid. So that's what, what we call, you know, two sister chromatids. So again, I'll draw it for you here. There's my chromosome. I know it looks kind of weird. It replicates, and now I get that. Now this side of it, these are sister chromatids, but these ones. So I have a set of sister chromatids in there. Okay? This is another example for you right there. Notice these two arrows right here. They're pointing to sister chromatids. Homologous chromosomes have the same information, but they're not identical to each other, whereas sister chromatids are identical to each other. Okay, let's go over homologous chromosomes more. What is this? What are we looking at? This is a karyotype. Oop. So if you look at any set of these, we circle the ones here. So chromosome number 19, homologous chromosomes. What about these? Homologous chromosomes. What about that? Homologous chromosomes. So again, homologous chromosomes versus sister chromatids. Homologous chromosomes. Here's a homologous pair. Okay? Now you take one of these and you can say these are sister chromatids with each other. There's one, there's another. It's a replicated chromosome. It's really important that you understand the difference between sister chromatids and homologous chromosomes. So if you're still struggling with it and you're like, I don't know what he's talking about, please write this question down. We gotta go over it in class if you're struggling with it. <clears throat> All right, so let's go over some phases of meiosis without getting into too much detail. So in prophase one, remember meiosis or mitosis was PMAT, remember that? Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then followed by cytokinesis. So in meiosis, we have the same thing except it goes through it twice. So when we start with prophase 1, we can also call this prophase of meiosis 1, be the same thing. Homologous chromosomes pair up and form tetrads. This is what we call a tetrad here. You get a pair of homologous chromosomes that are paired up with each other. When they do this, something called crossing over happens, and that's right here, super important term, crossing over. Let's look at what's going on with crossing over. They form tetrads and they actually start to exchange information with each other. Right, so if you look over here at meiosis one, notice what happened to this one. It's a blue chromosome, blue replicated chromosome that has a red part to it. Or it's even more clear in the anaphase one. So look at anaphase right here. Notice this guy right there. It's got a little red piece attached to it and its former blue piece ended up over there. That's what happens in crossing over. So you get the crossing over, which means that um, genes from different chromosomes are, are moving to separate or different places. So let's cover crossing over somewhere. A process by which non-sister chromatids, super important, non-sister chromatids, from homologous chromosomes exchange genes. An awesome example of it is right here. Ooh, I wish you could see what's behind my head. Um, right there, paternal. This one's from dad, this one's from mom. Notice what happens down here, they're crossing over. And in crossing over, notice that they change sections. And I know it's behind my head and you can't see it, but this one right here, this orange one, has a sort of a red piece to it. The one that's behind my head is a red one that's got an orange piece to it. All right, so questions that we should be able to answer by the end of this lecture. Why non-sister chromatids? Why homologous chromosomes? And most importantly, what's the point of crossing over? What's the big deal? Here's what crossing over leads to. Genetic variation. So take a moment to look at this. Look at this guy here, the great-grandfather. Let's just use colors. Let's say, you know, his chromosomes are blue. Here you see some turquoise, some green, and so on. Notice what happens just within a couple generations of the chromosomes. Crossing over leads to genetic variation, which is really good, what you want. <clears throat> so we're still in meiosis one. Notice how this is called metaphase one. In metaphase one, homologous pairs line up in the middle, just like what you see right here. And in anaphase one, homologous pairs are pulled apart from each other, as you can see here. All right, that's meiosis one. And from there we go to meiosis two, but it's really important to note this thing down here. DNA does not replicate between the two phases. 
If it did, it would kind of defeat the purpose because at the end, you want to end up with four cells and have them each have half the number of chromosomes. Okay, so in metaphase two, chromosomes line up single file. We no longer have homologous chromosomes here. Okay, now we have sister chromatids that are separating. This is really important. In anaphase two, sister chromatids separate from each other. And notice crossing over has taken place. That's why they, they look that way. So two terms that I brought up earlier, and let's go over them both now, haploid versus diploid. Diploid is what we refer to as 2N. Haploid, or excuse me, diploid is two copies of each chromosome, and all of our body cells are diploid. Okay, notice it says body cells. Haploid is what we call N. Uh, it's one copy of each chromosome, and our sperm and egg cells are haploid. The reason is because, you know, we have 46 chromosomes in our body, in our body cells. In our sperm cells, or egg cells, we have 23, right? So, mom donates 23, dad donates 23, and then you have 46. So, in their egg and sperm cells, you have 23 chromosomes. Now, here's a really nice comparison of mitosis and meiosis. <clears throat> so, note a couple of things. Number one, mitosis has basically one phase to it. You go through PMAT and you're done. Meiosis has meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 right there, okay? Notice something else. At the end of mitosis, your daughter cells, you're going to have two of them, and they'll both be 2N. So the goal is to have these daughter cells be identical to that parent cell. Whereas in meiosis, not so much like that. So not only do we have two phases, but at the end we end up with four cells. Notice how they're each N, so half the number of chromosomes. And let's see, I think that's all I wanted to tell you about that. Okay, let's move on to something called non-disjunction. All right, this is really important. Before we really get into it, let's just let's look at this picture. What's going on in this picture? So let's look at this side first. So it looks like through a process, looks like through anaphase, as they're getting pulled apart from each other, these uh, chromosomes, looks like here there's a mistake that's made, right? So in meiosis two, there was a mistake made and there was supposed to be a chromosome that was supposed to get pulled to right here and it did not get pulled over there. So we end up having this happen, right? So it goes to the wrong place. So at the end, this all turned out okay. So we get two cells that are both N but then here we have a problem. We have a cell that's N plus one, so it's got um, one too many chromosomes and an N minus one. Not a good situation, okay? And I'll, we can talk about later what it leads to. And, and someone can live, then, and they'll be fine, but there are, there are issues that sort of come with it. So let's look on this side next. Non-disjunction happening in meiosis one. So notice here it happened in meiosis two. Here's an example where it's happening in meiosis one. So non-disjunction can really happen in anaphase one or anaphase two, or in anaphase of meiosis one or anaphase of meiosis two. So here it happened in meiosis one, and notice what's happening right over there, right? You can tell clearly that it's missing chromosomes. So at the end, we end up with still four cells, but two of them are N plus one and two are N minus one. So we don't have any what we would call normal cells there. All right, myotic spindle works incorrectly. That's part of sort of what causes non-disjunction. The chromosomes fail to separate properly, and this can occur during meiosis one or meiosis two, as I mentioned before. All right, that's the end of our lecture. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, good luck. See you guys in class.